While buses have been one of the most revolutionary inventions for transporting people, even from their earliest primitive horse-drawn versions, becoming one of the most efficient, comfortable, and safest means of transport has been a whole process of changes and evolution. Being one of the best mobility options both for short-distance and long-distance road trips has meant that over the years various peculiar design proposals have emerged, which have served to make them as we know them today. That is why today we will talk about why buses have their current design, analyzing especially aspects such as why they have the engine in the rear. In addition to the first horse-drawn versions, their evolved variants propelled by steam, or even the first models propelled by combustion engines, one of the most peculiar versions has undoubtedly been the semi-trailer buses. While their name is quite descriptive, these are buses that were made up of a main truck, which pulled a trailer designed for passenger transport, connected through the fifth wheel. The fact that this form of bus is not present today is due to various good reasons, which in turn give us an idea of why the current design is as it is. To begin with, this idea of the semi-trailer buses started in Amsterdam in 1924, due to the need for a passenger vehicle that could navigate narrow streets. Only three models were produced which, although they were proposed as solid concepts, showed that the wear on their moving parts made them unviable. It is worth noting that one of the most outstanding examples of this type of semi-trailer bus is the Baghdad bus. This was a vehicle designed to cross the enormous Middle Eastern desert with the intention of connecting the cities of Baghdad and Damascus, which was built by a pair of New Zealand brothers. If you are interested in this story, visit our video on the subject on the channel. Curiously, during and after the Second World War, some countries tried to implement this solution, even integrating more than 100 units into their public transport routes, as in the case of Australia. Another similar case was that of the Netherlands, which acquired up to 250 Crossley chassis from the United Kingdom, to combine them with bus trailers manufactured by DAF, with the aim of boosting the nation that had been affected by the war. Similarly, in other countries around the world, such as Cuba and South Africa, this solution was also implemented for several decades. However, in almost all cases, a series of problems caused this idea to be nothing more than a temporary solution. Among these problems is the enormous demand for space that having a truck and a complete anchored trailer entailed. Likewise, this configuration was more expensive to maintain and operate, since more personnel were required if it was intended to have a commercial purpose. The final nail in the coffin for this solution was the public perception itself. Over time, users began to fear that accidents would occur, such as the trailer separating from the truck during transit. At this point, the only objective benefit of this peculiar bus version was that the driver could enjoy a trip in complete peace and quiet, thanks to being far from the passengers. After decades of changes, adjustments, and reinventions, buses have finally achieved what appears to be their definitive design. Far from being an engineering whim, this arrangement is the result of the constant search to optimize the functionality of these vehicles for different environments and types of journeys. Specifically, both the design and the decision to position the engine in the rear stem from four fundamental principles that we will see below. Space optimization and accessibility. First is space optimization. By locating all the mechanical parts toward the rear, the entire central and front space of the bus is completely freed up. This consequently allows for more space for both passengers and luggage itself. Focusing on the central part, in long-distance travel buses, this allows the lower part of the bus to be completely free for access to large amounts of luggage, while maintaining a comfortable area for passengers inside. It also facilitates the integration of more seats inside which translates into higher revenue and profitability. Meanwhile, in the front part, the driver can have better visibility by allowing the installation of huge panoramic windshields. This wide and frontal view makes it easier for drivers to detect obstacles, such as other vehicles, cyclists, or even pedestrians. 
This visibility is crucial when driving in crowded areas, mainly for buses that are designed for operation in densely populated urban areas. Another imperative consideration which goes hand-in-hand -hand with space optimization is accessibility. Having low and flat floors greatly facilitates the boarding and alighting of people, with a reduced number of steps. This is crucial for agility on short-distance routes and essential for people with reduced mobility. Likewise, this design facilitates the creation of much wider and more comfortable entrances and exits. Especially in buses for urban routes, this is important to streamline the flow of passengers, avoiding delays or setbacks at each of the stops. Noise reduction and increased comfort. The second reason for its design is closely related to the space distribution and refers to noise reduction and mainly increased comfort. The rear location of the engine, together with the implementation of soundproofing materials, keeps noise and vibrations isolated from the passenger area and the driver's cabin, creating a comfortable and quiet environment for everyone, improving overall comfort. Although for passengers it means a much calmer and more pleasant trip, it is the drivers who benefit most from this. Unlike other types of buses, such as school buses, which have an engine in the front, this arrangement allows drivers to complete long shifts without the discomfort of engine noise or movement. Mechanical simplicity and transmission efficiency. Due to the rear-wheel drive of buses, the third determining factor for locating the engine in the rear is due to its proximity to the drive axles, thanks to which a more direct connection is possible, as well as equipping a simpler transmission. This achieves greater mechanical simplicity along with superior transmission efficiency by reducing the need for a long and complex drive shaft that would have to run the entire length of the vehicle, which can lead to losses in efficiency and power. Better weight distribution and traction. Hand in hand with the previous point and as the last decisive factor, the weight distribution achieved with the engine in the rear is truly ideal for a vehicle of this size and utility. The weight located precisely over the drive axle also represents a significant improvement in traction, which is especially useful on slopes when starting with a heavy load or in complicated road conditions, such as snow or rain. In practice, there are some other different design configurations, such as buses with the engine in the front, for school applications, which are generally based on pre-existing truck models, as well as buses with centralized engines, designed this way to have a low floor and the possibility of being extended with additional articulated sections. Whatever the form, buses are not only practical, but are design marvels created to satisfy the needs of land transport, both in busy cities and on the enormous highways that connect those cities.